Get off me! Krakatawa! McKnight's in for the touchdown! Oh, no! Kilauea, Hawaii. Home of the world's most active volcano, Mount Kilauea, where the island's new D1 university gets its name. Thanks to a hefty check from the Seismological Society of America, Mount Kilauea University was born. And their team name? The Seismos. Because why wouldn't someone want to attend a university within just a few miles of an active volcano? This is the biggest challenge that the school's brand new football team has to tackle in the competitive nature of recruiting. There's really not much to sell about the program since we spent all of our money on this super cool field. Our athletic facilities, the local goal Golden Corral Buffet. Academics? We only have five total professors, and their qualifications are pretty questionable. And call us Bishop Sycamore 2.0 because the only type of television exposure we'll be getting is on Sports Center when we get absolutely waxed by top 10 teams. And you would think that the mascot for a volcano themed football team would be pretty cool, but we can't even afford that. Instead, we had to take a community volunteer and somehow ended up with this guy. There must have been a typo on the Craigslist ad because it's Seismo, not Seismo. We don't know much about this guy, but he was on a three-month bender at the Tiki Bars when he got the call, but he's basically the lead singer of the Red Hot Chili Peppers with a couple more Baconators. The only head coach we could get our hands on has been completely blacklisted by the rest of college football, while former East Carolina head coach Bender Rover is coming off of a conference championship win, a wild off-the-field lifestyle, and unproven accusations of recruiting violations led to a chain of controversy and a quick exit. Likewise, all of our players are walk-ons and washed-out transfers with character concerns, who like Rover are risks that no other program wants to take. This roster really has a long way to go before they can even sniff at the surface of contention. However, despite all the controversy, there is a glimmer of hope for the future of MKU considering that this is their first year of existence. Coach Rover has proven himself to be one of the best talent evaluators and developers in college football. There is no denying that he left Pirates head coach Taj Berry, a young and talented roster that looks primed to compete nationally for years to come. So the big question that MKU's like 10 fans are asking is, can he do it again? Let's meet the team he's starting out with. Our best overall player is senior middle linebacker Frank Reynolds. He's best known as the Trash Man because he shares a name and hometown with Danny DeVito's character from the show It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I'm the Trash Man! Like his character, Reynolds is undersized for his position and is really just here to party. Nonetheless, he's the strongest player on the team with 81 strength and leads all defenders on the team in tackling, pursuit, hit power, and play recognition. Our best offensive player on paper is Chris Briggs. The sophomore wideout was supposed to have a DK Metcalf type ceiling, combining size and speed. Instead, his injury history and underdeveloped hands got the best of Briggs's career. But he'll have a second chance at MKU. He's our fastest player at 88 speed, but only has 59 catching and 58 catch in traffic. The quarterback position is the weakest on the entire roster. Senior Maxwell Hauser is our best passing quarterback with 68 throw power and by far the best accuracy at 73, but he's an absolute statue coming in with only 48 speed. Because of this, Hauser will likely run a two quarterback system with fellow senior Marvel Lewis, who offers impressive mobility but significantly lower accuracy at 61. Comment below which quarterback you prefer. If those two guys go down, well, we're basically screwed. Blaze Nua is our next best option, offering the strongest arm on the team, but also the least accurate. Dominic Dotson is the cousin of ECU offensive coordinator Demarcus Dotson, but he didn't even start on his high school team. Our running back room is equally unimpressive. Caleb Perry is our most athletic back with a decent 81 speed and acceleration. He converted from receiver because he can't catch and offers basically nothing else. Our primary short yardage option is Donnie Watson, who's also a 58 overall, but has 77 speed and 69 acceleration. Not nice. His most promising traits are his break tackle, trucking, and stiff arm. Fullback Urban Petrino isn't much to write home about, but he'll get the job done and has four years of eligibility remaining. At wide receiver, there's a significant drop off in the room after Chris Briggs, but senior Deegan Faria is the number two option. He's really the closest thing we have to a possession receiver on the roster and will be relied on more in contested catch situations. Vash Thappa is our slot guy and leads the team with 87 agility. He has solid speed at 84, but has even worse hands than Chris Briggs. It's definitely gonna be a very frustrating season of drops out of this group. Arguably, our most well-rounded player is tight end Thomas Pontillo III. He doesn't noticeably excel at anything, but also doesn't have any clear deficiencies in his game. Also, he's a junior, so we'll get two years out of him. His backup is Yeti Eddie, who is just slightly worse in every element of his game, but it's tough to bring down if you can get the ball in his 
his hands. It's difficult to find good offensive linemen, especially as a brand new school, so it's no surprise that all of the linemen are only here to take advantage of unlimited Golden Corral opportunities. You can talk about their lack of talent all you want, but you can't deny their love for cholesterol clogging Kazin. I mean, come on, our right tackle's name is literally Tortellini. On defense, we start out with one of our most promising young players and sophomore defensive end, Randy Savage. He has great size and athleticism for his position at 6'4", 253, and while he's still developing, he did show promise in junior college before getting the boot from the team for smoking some of that seaweed. On the other end, we've got William Jenkins, who isn't nearly as athletic, but does have decent power moves and much better play recognition. The senior really doesn't offer that much else to the rotation, though, but is the best option we've got. Our highest rated defensive lineman is Matthew Wisniewski. He's surprisingly athletic for his size with 66 speed, 76 strength, and 77 acceleration. He's very raw because he hasn't actually played football since high school after giving collegiate wrestling a shot. We already talked about Frank Reynolds at middle linebacker, but our other starters aren't nearly as good. Junior O'Man is the starter, and while his name is very fun to say, he's pretty miserable in coverage, but is a decent run defender if he can position himself anywhere near the ball carrier. While the other starter, Colt Ragland, is slightly more athletic and offers some more coverage ability, his tackling takes a huge hit to the point where they're about equally bad. Our number one corner will be a familiar face to anyone who watched the ECU Dynasty series. It's Jordan Fowler, who chose to follow Coach Rover to MKU after getting getting basically bullied off the team for getting completely toasted at least once a game. This could be a really fun redemption arc for him as he's only a sophomore, but needs a lot of work. After him, there's a huge drop off. Our number two is Slim Marley, who is six foot three, but lacks any athleticism at all. He does have decent ball skills though, so we'll see if that makes up for his poor play. Our slot guy is senior Miguel Vasquez. He's also six foot three, but is slightly more athletic than Marley, but is much less refined in coverage. The second best defensive player on the team is free safety Greg Kling. He's the fastest safety on the team and doesn't really have a clear weakness, although he doesn't really pop off the screen. The last of the defensive starters is strong safety Marcus Hampton, who is quite slow and can't cover well at all, but does have 72 tackling. Our starting kicker is Jenny Urbanowski. She's the only active transgender player in college football and has hit a long of 40 yards in practice. Our starting punter is Brad Brooks, who is actually a decent quarterback prospect until he shattered a high school record for taking the most sacks in a single year. Just like David Carr, his mentals were never the same again, and he returns to football as a punter. When I said that our team was bad, I truly meant it. There are some interesting pieces in place, but most of our players are upperclassmen, so it's going to be an uphill battle for several seasons. This year will be especially rough as we start out the season taking on the same team that Bender Rover just left, and they have one of the most talented rosters in all of college football. Then, as an FBS independent team, we have to take on several Blue Bloods just to make a bit of money. But there will be some more winnable games along the way as well, so hopefully it makes up for any cheek clapping that we have to endure. Just to add to the difficulty, we'll be playing this series on Sea Gator's Heisman Slider set, and I'll update them as they get patched throughout the series. If you're unaware of this set, I made a video on it a while back that I'll leave in the description for you to check out after the video. With the groundwork laid down for this season, we need to start worrying about the future, especially with so many senior players. Convincing recruits to come to Hawaii is difficult enough, with very few homegrown prospects to choose from. Even most of the players who are interested in us don't get any bonus at all. On the contrary, East Carolina is viewed as a future powerhouse with a great young coaching staff and the defending Heisman Trophy winner in Trevor McKnight. So far, they've attracted interest from even the most premier prospects in this class. Side note, we are using Fang's recruiting generator, which explains the high overalls here. Even as MKU climbs the national ladder and builds their program from the ground up, Bender Rover will always have a rival in the program he built himself. ECU isn't going away anytime soon because I am recruiting for them on their side. They deserve to be a powerhouse, which I personally feel adds a cool element of Lord of the Series. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm only trying to recruit players in line with what I think would happen in real life, so expect a lot of one and two star guys to start off. I'll also only be offering scholarships to 10 players per season for now, just to make a recruiting that more important. Nobody is interested in us so far. The best player we have is a 62 overall, although I kind of like the challenge of going after lower star players and watching them develop as the series goes on. Oh wait, never mind. My best player pre-scouting is actually a 64. Let's go. We really need some gems. Five quarterbacks to scout. We just need one of them to be good. Both of our top two guys are graduating, and as you know, Blaze knew is not it. Come on, McKay Taylor. Oh, that's a bad start. Our future is looking bleak. All we have left is the one star. Come on, Nate Pantles. The hidden gem. Yes, let's go. 81 throw power. I can absolutely work with that. The Hawaii native doesn't even have anybody else going after him. This is meant to be. So far, not so good. Oh, never mind. Okay, 91 speed, 80 acceleration. I actually like him more than the 66 overall. Offensive line could make or break this rebuild, and we only have three 
three on the board. Please go up, Anthony. Thank you. Plus five. Whoa, Stuart Paul, the one-star center. That's as good as we're gonna get. I should probably mention that I'm not gonna try to add too many more guys to the board throughout the year. So it's really encouraging that we have a lot of options right away. I've set the stage far too much for the ECU rivalry to not play this game. I'm looking forward to seeing what our team can do. I did buff their roster, so they're looking pretty scary. Trevor McKnight, 99 speed, 99 acceleration. I don't know what they're passing around at the team pharmacy, but I'm gonna need immediate drug tests. Now's the time to like and subscribe because there's a 52 overall difference between us. I'm very scared. I'm not sure what to expect today, but sunshine and rainbows is certainly not on my list of expectations. But who knows? We have some exciting players. Maybe we'll see some flashes. Jenny Urbanowski to kick off a new era of football. A sweep of the right leg in this dynasty is underway. Let's not start this one out with the kick return touchdown. Tavarian Jennings takes us out and thankfully he's corralled right around the 30 yard line. I'll take it. Sophomore year for Noah Brooks and Trevor McKnight. It's amazing they grow up so fast. North Tuck comes in motion. Hand off McKnight up the middle. Not too much room, and he's tripped up. We held the former Heisman Trophy winner to five. I can't believe I'm saying this, but we have a chance to get off the field on third and six. Brooks dumps off the bird, and oh, we can't quite get there. Reynolds in coverage. Drive continues. It's so weird playing against the Dynasty team that I literally just ended things off against. And no, oh, Trevor, don't do this to us, please. Another third down situation. Come on, defense. Trevor McKnight. Oh, there's no chance. They're blocking us too good. Oh, he's stiff arming everybody. What is happening down inside the five yard line? Call him a healthy dose of ice. Viagra. He is not going down easily at all. Long opening drive for the Pirates. Can they get into the end zone? Noah Brooks in the shotgun. Stands in the pocket. Throws middle. He's got Horn for a touchdown. They cap off their opening drive with a four-yard score. 7-0. Let's see what Maxwell Hauser and the offense can do on their first play. Play action. Hauser in trouble. He goes down immediately. He had Deegan Faria open on the left side, but meets Tajik Bush instead. Third down and a mile on their first drive. Not ideal. Hauser in the gun. Takes a snap. Three-man rush comes downfield. Looking for Briggs and he drops it. That's a huge missed opportunity. We knew his hands were going to be a problem from the start. Brad Brooks stands in the end zone to punt for the first time this year of probably many, to be honest. This is a liner that bounces all the way down inside the 25 and inside the 20. You gotta love these broken punt physics. Can we get a stop on drive number two? Sweep right side McKnight. He's getting blocks all over the place and he has the speed to just run around our entire team and tack on 15 with the face mask because why not? Oh man, why did we sign up for this? Brooks goes play action. What are you going to do this time? Airs it out down the sideline. And of course, North Keck got his feet in for 21 yards and another pirate first down. Not super heavy on the ground game so far as I expected when they have. It's been a problem as Brooks airs it out. Speaking of which to North Cut, he had the 21 yard reception on the sideline and he has the second pirate touchdown of the game. So obviously this first game is going to be almost entirely for the lulls. We don't expect to win it at all, but it'd be nice to see that we have some talent on the roster. Though, of course, he fumbled. It's all for the lulls. Pedro Bird scoops it up. And, of course, ECU has the ball back. Protect your house, Seismos. Bunch set to the left side. Brooks stands in the pocket. High throw middle of the field, and it's the true freshman, Tavarian Jennings, in the end zone. Noah Brooks has his third first quarter touchdown. I know Chris Briggs dropped one, but we haven't completed a pass today. Bunch sets to the right side. Hauser looking to change that. Throws quick, and he finally got it. Thomas Pontillo. You'll love to see it from the big tight end. We couldn't even go a quarter without one of our players being out for the game. We are a sad, sad team. Let's try the run game. Oh, Perry got blown up. Let's not try that one again. We're looking for our first first down in team history. Third down and three. Hauser's screen pass to Thappa. Come on, fight for it, and he got it. I've never been so excited about a three-yard pass. Can we convert again? This time, third and 14. Hauser puts it up for grabs to Pontillo. He drops it, and it's intercepted. Into the hands of Damon Dungleberg. He breaks a tackle running the other way. Throw was supposed to be angled inside a little bit more, and then Pontillo didn't make the catch. Just a disastrous play altogether. First interception of the series, and with Hauser at the helm, you can bet on it not being the last. So we are 45 overall, so this type of start, not unexpected at all. Brooks in the shotgun, lobs downfield, and oh man, it's nearly intercepted. And yes, that's his name. From the gun, Brooks sends Burton motion left to right. Delayed draw to McKnight. He breaks one tackle in the backfield and slips away for a first down, 16 yards. Really regretting that dropped interception. It's second down and goal from the five yard line. Brooks dumps this one off to Horn. Easy touchdown. Number four in quarter number one for Noah Brooks in the offense. They're having a field day against their former coach. Finally, that quarter's over. Bunch set to the right side, Hauser. 
Oh, we've got Briggs open. Come on. Oh, he drops it one more time. Only 12 yards of passing. Miserable. We're sending the heat on second down and 10. We need to keep this defense off balance. Brooks against the blitz steps up. Oh, come on. He's sacked. Oh, man, for a loss of two. And the first sack in team history. Come on, defense. Prove that you have not been as bad as this score suggests. Third down and 12. Brooks against the blitz. Throws quick bird. He breaks the tackle. Has a first down. And is spun down inside the 20-yard line. Ben, don't break. Show you're not completely useless. Brooks in the shot. Shotgun steps up to run, and he's sacked again. It's a reunion as Jordan Fowler gets to him. His new team's down four possessions to his old, but that has to feel at least a little good. Another third and long for the Pirates. We haven't gotten off the field on a single one of them. Brooks in the gun. Has time, three-man rush. Running out of time. Throws him to the dirt, and it's incomplete. Finally, a fourth down. Bender Rover Jr. on to make it 31 to nothing against his dad's team. Snap spot on the way, and that's gotta feel good. Straight down the middle. Third and six. Can we convert? Bunch that right side. To Hauser. Briggs comes open over the middle. He makes the catch. No, he fumbles. No, you can't make that up. Are you kidding me? Why game? He finally makes the catch. And of course, he still finds a way to put it on the ground. Really tough homecoming for Bender Rover. Third down and three. Brooks draw to McKnight. The trash man is there and he makes the tackle. Back to back third down stops for the Seismos. Make your dad proud from 48 yards out. Junior snap spot on the way. And that one has the distance and then some. He's got a boot. Gotta make this count. It could be our last chance to score score before the half. Second down and 10. Hauser from the single back. We've got a man over the middle. Pontillo hauls it in. Oh, he's hitting. He lost the football again. Come on, game. That's three fumbles on the game now. I'm not even throwing picks. I want to see what Marvel Lewis can do. Let's make this half a little interesting. Two tight ends in the game to the right side. Give it off to Perry. And there's just no room for him to go at all. John Chadwick. I don't know if there's a lower chance of Marvel Lewis actually completing this pass or the receiver dropping it. We've got Briggs. Come on. He hauls it in. It's a first down. Marvel Lewis bringing a different energy to this offense. Never mind, he's injured now. Back to Maxwell Hauser. Third down and seven, two by two. We're sending him deep. Hauser over the middle and it's intercepted. Carry Spell Jr. I was trying to thread the needle, but I forgot that he has like 60 throw power or something. Third down and two. Bring out Bender Rover Jr. again. Speed option left side. Flip Bashir and oh man takes him out at the knees. I learned that strat from my good friend Param Crow. Just dive and hit him in the knee. Our offense hasn't been as bad as the score suggests, but our offense on the other hand needs some work, but that's a positive game. Terrible game running the ball. Caleb Perry. What are the stats? 8 for 10. I want to see Marvel Lewis scramble. What can he do from the single back set? Oh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Downfield only missed him wildly. The biggest thing I'm noticing is that our stamina ratings are so low that we have to test our non-existent death. Whoa, Vash Thapper clean release. He's open. He makes the catch step back inside the 40. And that's the biggest offensive play of the game so far. We could be well on our way to the first touchdown in school history. I'm keeping the ball in Marvel Lewis's hands. He's been a monster. Takes a snap. Rolls to his right. I've got a man down there. It's Briggs. Oh, it's an interception instead. That linebacker is way too rangy. Like 99 acceleration. Come on, dude. You're a freshman. McKnight's in the Wildcat. That's scary. He sends Jennings in motion. Gives it off to him. Oh, he just put Miguel Vasquez in his grave. This 5'11 wide receiver just stiff arming us like we're nothing all the way down to the 21 yard line. Honestly, it sounds weird, but I'd be impressed if our defense could force four field goals in a row. Horn over the middle. Oh, and I jinxed it. Completely missed the tackle. I'm feeling this play to keep the drive moving. We need a touchdown. They're sending the heat. Who's open? Thomas Pontillo's wide open. Come on. No Marvel Lewis. Why? They've got quads to the right side. We definitely don't have the personnel for this. Come on. Interception. Pick six. Oh no. He burnt us deep. Taji Hudson. Our safeties aren't near fast enough. The 54 yard bomb gets them the 50 burger. Marvel, I need you to calm down for just one more drive. I am committed to getting this touchdown, whatever it takes. We've got a man wide open. No, he missed Briggs. It's four down territory down 58 points as far as I'm concerned. Okay, this is definitely man coverage. Step up, Marvel. Take off, Marvel. Yes, a first down. I forgot he had wheels. He's much faster than Maxwell Hauser. I will end this video happily if we can just get one more touchdown. Counter run Perry. Running the ball was a risk. Solid chunk of eight. Our defense forced three field goals in a row. We need to get the stop for them. Lewis, read option. Keeps it up the middle. He has another first down. Down to the pirate logo. We still have a minute and two timeouts to go. We cannot avoid third down. It's like the plague. Deep attack, my favorite play. Come on. We have a man open downfield. Thank you, accurate throw. McCoy, I don't know who you are. Zier McCoy for 30 yards. Thank you so much for stepping up. This touchdown might happen. I might just take off with Marvel here if nothing develops. Talking like the game's on the line or something. Throwing traffic, Briggs. Nice catch. Of course he caught that one. Six turnovers today. We cannot have a seventh with 18 seconds to go. 
Come on, Lewis. Only down 50. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That is not a safe throw. Fourth and one. The game's on the line. Well, the game's over. Our pride is on the line. Come on, fullback dive. Irvin Petrino, put your head down. Is he in? He's in. Touchdown. I feel like we just won the national championship. Of all players we have on the roster, our fullback gets the first touchdown in school history. Noah Brooks may have scored six touchdowns against us, and the touchdown that we did score was against ECU's backup defense, but remember that they're 50 overall points higher than us. What happens when we play an FCS school? Comment which quarterback you preferred. I felt like Maxwell Hauser was definitely more accurate, but Marvel Lewis was just electric out there. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments section who you prefer going forward. Marvel Lewis's mobility might help us out a little bit because obviously Maxwell Hauser can't run. Caleb Perry averaged less than two yards per attempt. A lot of bad drops today from our receiving core, especially Chris Briggs, who had three of them, but he was still our leading receiver today, along with Vash Thapa, who had that big 38-yard catch. Frank Reynolds was as advertised, leading the team in tackles with eight and two TFLs, and our defense really tightened up as the game went on. We may have gotten dominated in every measurable statistic today, but there's always a glimmer of hope when your fullback wins Offensive Player of the Week. Unfortunately, it gets tougher next week with number one Alabama, and then things get a little bit easier. Grab your popcorn, take a couple shots, and get comfy, because next week might get ugly. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like and subscribe for more MKU content. It would help out a ton supporting the series moving forward. My name is Jack. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you to Patreon supporters CJP Polt, Dalton Jet, Jason DeMarco, Deegan Faria, Maki Harukawa, Tklink24, Buckknife, Slim Marley, Christian Horn, Ibrahim Bashir, Jonathan Chadwick, Chrissy the King, Pum, Matthew, Jordan, Thomas Pontillo, Randy Constance, and Lamar Stevens.